With no further ado, we welcome the greatest Speedway motorcycle rider there ever has been, Ivan Major. Welcome to Rocket Thursday Thunder, Ivan. Thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure. Ivan, you uh, you don't seem to have slowed down any in your career. These days you're on your way to being a best-selling author as well. How is the new book going? Uh, it's been going very good and um, we've had to reprint for, Australia, uh, for England and we're reprinting for Australia and uh, New Zealand also. Wow, so the interest has been phenomenal. Yeah. That's hey, tremendous. Hey Ivan, how many years did you actually spend over in the UK when you were racing? Uh, I spent about 30 years there. Because you can tell the accent. Um, <laughs> but uh, we always used to um, come back to Aussie and New Zealand um, uh, every year. But uh, as you say about my accent, um, uh, I've got a lot of English expressions. I don't speak like an English guy, but um, uh, a lot of the expressions I've got, um, that's from 30 years being in England, and you say things in a, in a different way uh, than Aussies do, and particularly uh, talking about uh, parts of bikes and speedway bikes and equipment and stuff like that. Just makes it easier for them to understand. Yeah. Ivan, um, oh, I have so many things to ask you. Your long track experience as well as your speedway, uh, did you have a preference? Was speedway more of your preference than long track? Actually, I preferred the long track. Wow. Um, uh, the, um, from the first time I rode at uh, Port Pirie in uh, South Australia Jeez. at uh, Easter of 1960, um, I led that Australian Long Track Championship for um, uh, its uh, five laps around that mile track and I led it for four and a half laps uh, on my Jap and it seized up oh. and then uh, I led it on Fred Jolly's uh, ESO for about five and a half laps, uh, four and a half laps exactly the same place, the clutch came off oh. and then uh, Jack Young said to me at one time um, Early in uh, 1962, uh, we went over for the um, Victorian Championship and we went in Youngie's uh, ute and stuff and I was asking him questions all the way over and all the way back and he said to me, you don't get any uh, points for being the fastest in world championships um, but if, you're, if you win the meeting and you get one point more than the other guy, you're the world champ. And uh, from that time on, I've always uh, done what um, uh, Youngie said. And those five laps around Port Pirie, and uh, I won it in 1962, they're probably the fi fi f slowest five laps I've ever <laughs> done around the track. <laughs> and uh, Youngie said, you've got to conserve your engine, uh, conserve your rear tyre, and especially conserve your front chain. And I've done that... I've done that all my career, from from uh, early 1962, after Youngie told me that. Ivan, I spoke to Con Micro today, who was a promoter that brought you to Australia for 13 consecutive years to race yep. at the, the famous Claremont Speedway. Yeah. He said that you would practice from 12 o'clock till 2 o'clock every minute of that practice session and run every conceivable setup on the bike. Yeah. Have you always been that thorough as a person before you rode Speedway? Uh, yes, so I did. And um, well, I used to do TV uh, because the TV wanted to come out at about 12 o'clock yep. uh, to get back and put it on the news on um, at uh, six o'clock at night. Um, but uh, so I done whatever the TV wanted me to do for half an hour or an hour. Um, but uh, I always stayed out there. And uh, what Con didn't tell you is it was always like 41 or 42 <laughs> degrees <laughs> in the shade of Claremont in January because we used to do the first two Fridays in January. Yep. And uh, I'd get there on about the Wednesday, Tuesday night, and um, uh, and uh, on, on Wednesday uh, midday I'd have my two bikes out there and I used to leave two bikes in Perth every year and I just took the engines and um, uh, so um, we, we, I put the in, engines in on the um, Wednesday morning and practice on the Wednesday 
about midday. Obviously, uh, talking about Colmogro, Ivan, um, I, I rate him as one of the all-time great promoters. Um, every time we went there after, for World Series events for the sprint cars, he'd do the same thing. He'd get all the news channels down. Yeah. Um, he used to put a barbecue on. He used to do so much more outside the loop. How yeah. would you rate him in the promotion side of things? Oh, yeah. And, and who uh, was one of the better he's, ones? Uh, Kim Van Eythen was my favourite Australian promoter. And uh, Connor's rate's pretty well the same as him, because um, same as Kim Van Eythen, because... Um, as you say, Con used to have all the media down there, all the TV, the newspaper, and um, all that stuff, radio stations. Um, he used to really promote that uh, Claremont. That was Claremont was his uh, was Con's baby. Ivan, you've you've seen so many different facets of the sport. You know, as a ra as a racer, there was no better. You also turned your hand to promoting with the Golden Helmet series. You rode with some of the greats alongside you in in world tours of the best riders. You went to American road demonstration events with people like Bruce Penhall and Bobby Schwartz and guys like that. And yeah. you've seen so many sides of the sport, haven't you? Yeah, um, uh, I promoted uh, with. Uh, Barry Briggs, the um, uh, World Series um, in uh, 74, 5, 6 and 7. Wow. Um, but uh, at that time, uh, I was riding in them. Um, and uh, those days, we didn't get a lot of sponsorship. So we relied on, um, on, on, on the spectators. Um, and it got too much to do because, um, you know, I was riding in them and we had all the top international superstars yep. uh, there and um, I was trying to beat them all the time. Um, and, um, and then run the show as well. That must have been, yeah, that must have been a nightmare. Yeah, and all that stuff. So. Just quickly, Ivan, just before we wrap up a little bit here in a minute, you obviously made such a, a illustrious career racing We've got a whole new breed coming through at the moment over in England. We don't see too much of the racing here in Australia too much anymore. Of the Australian guys, who do you rate as the next up-and-coming superstar uh, in the game? Um, well, there's a few good Aussies coming up, but uh, most of them are big-time drinkers, and that's mm. going to hinder their career. Yep. Um, I never drank even beer until I was 40-year-old. Um so, um, so attitude and, and dedication is everything, Ivan, isn't it? Yes, it is. How and about uh, Thomas Gollub winning at 39 years of age, Ivan? That must have brought a smile to your face. Yeah, 39 and four months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought Tommy Price was old uh, <laughs> when he won the um, in, 90, in, in, uh, 90, in uh, 1949 World Championship. But uh, I got to know from England that... Uh, uh, Tommy Price was uh, 37 years and 10 months old. So uh, I emailed to Thomas. Well, I, t I talked to Thomas uh, the day after he won it. And um, then I emailed him and said, uh, you're the oldest ever. Um, uh, Tommy, Tommy Price, I thought he was, Tommy Price was 38 or 39. But anyway, I got told by a guy in England who knows everything about them. Um, he was 37 and 10 months old when he won at uh, Wembley in, in um, uh, 1949. You know, Trevor, so, I, um, uh, I emailed Ivan through his website to buy his book for my dad for his birthday this weekend. Happy birthday, Dad. Yeah. Ivan emailed back immediately, personally, how would you like me to sign it? So awesome. any, anybody that buys this book that... that Emails through Ivan's website. If you Google Ivan Major autobiography, if you just Google Ivan Major and order the book, it is a phenomenal piece of work. I don't know how you've sat down and put all this stuff together with your lovely wife and all the history that goes into it, but not only that, to come back and immediately say, would you like me to sign it? My dad was blown away by the book, let alone the fact that Ivan signed it. So, Ivan, um, I cannot thank you enough for your time. I know you're a very busy man. We would love to push the book for you as much as we can, and we will. It's a remarkable story. I hope it sells billions for you, and I hope that we see you touring Australia with more regular motorcycle activities in this year ahead. Okay, well, anyone who goes to my website, ivermajor.com, 
and buys a book off uh, Ivan's shop, um, I always email them uh, because I've got their email and I've got their address uh, from PayPal. And I always email them and say, um, how do you want me to sign it? And I'll do so before I post it to you. Unbelievable. Oh, man, it's so cool. My dad was blown away, Ivan. Yeah. I'm actually spewing the Red Dragons winding us up because there's so many more things I'd like to talk to you about, Ivan. Uh, my grandfather used to just idolise you and talk about you all the time. And unfortunately, we're getting wound up. So um, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thanks a million, Ivan. Have a great time up there. Wow. Whew. Well, you could have spoke. To, this is no good. We could have spoken to him for another half an hour. Dragon. <laughs> Dragon is Darren Disbury. That's the code word for Darren Disbury. Greeny's glaring at him. We need oh, to get him like back There's at so some much stage. you could have asked him. I like, I wanted to talk to him about his relationship with John Bolger. Like, I talking, like last week we spoke to John and he just, just spoke in gleaming terms about Ivan and the way he went about it. Very interesting to talk about his, his the drinking with some of the young guys coming up, mm. which is very interesting. So, um, did he really uh, hold back, did he? Well, he didn't really hold back. He didn't really say too much either. We didn't get an answer out of him. Like, we could have spoke to Ivan for a lot longer. So maybe we get him on for a second or Greedy's Greedy's fired up. He's taking a swing at Diz. Well, it's my, on. Well, my favourite uh, young guy coming up at the moment is Darcy Ward. Yep. I think he's absolutely going to be the next big gun. So maybe we can get him on another time and grill him a bit more about that. Wow, Trevor I mean, Green. We didn't get any answers, did we? He's the, fired up, the green man. I love Abby. it. Wasn't that, Abby. The Harrop Hurricane is elbows up. We're going to take a quick break while Trevor Green sets apart Darren Dishbreed. We'll be back on Rocket Thursday Thunder after this.